Hey everybody, it's the Stream Life here, and I'm just going to make a really quick tutorial on the event system, because a lot of people have been asking me to do a really quick tutorial on it, so I'm going to make this short, simple, and sweet. Uh, just go over some of the big things that you can use the event system with. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to start off in this blank space. So the event system can be found underneath the gameplay tab and you have this mesh box that you get whenever you spawn it and the entire point of this box is that whenever a ball passes through it it activates the contents inside of it if you right click on the event system box it's split up into two different sections the begin overlap and the end overlap and a lot of people get confused by this but it's really easy and simple the begin overlap is when the ball begins to move inside of it, and the end overlap is when it moves out of it. Um, in reality, if you're just trying to make things happen whenever you, you know, go through the event box, all you have to use is, like, begin overlap, because as soon as someone touches it, it gets activated. The only time you would ever want end overlap to happen is if you have like a bigger box let's say like this in a play area and you want events or things to continue to happen until the player leaves the area and that's where you would put the actions in end overlap right so uh, how do you use it well that is fairly simple so I'm gonna delete this and go to a map that already has one set up so that you can uh, see it work for instance I have this one right here at the beginning of this map, I have an event, um, and I drag it over here so that it's outside the play zone so I can easily right-click on it. So what you're going to do is you're going to first hit Select Object, and that will add an object uh, that will be affected by this event. So if I do Select Object and I do, let's say, that hill right there, it says at the bottom, Medium Hill Dirt, and then it will appear. Then this drop-down menu right here are all the different uh, events or actions uh, that can take place to this object. Resizing it, you can make it, you know, different sizes. Relocate, you could just instantly move it. Visibility turns the visibility of that object on or off. Turn the collision on or off. A delay means that you are literally putting a timed delay in actions. Um, rotate it. Again, you can rotate it so many degrees. Transform is normally what you want to do if you want to do anything fancy about moving and rotating or in the such because then you can play around with it while you use it. I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, loop at index allows you to create loops in your basically event code. Reset resets this object back to its original state and then change theme is uh, you could change it for in between the different themes in the game. So let's just go with something that's happening right now. For instance, this, this barrel. This is a very, very, uh, like, long list of transforms, right? And the entire point of it is I have this object selected right here, which is this rotating barrel, which is, if I right-click on it, it's actually a rotating piece. So it's set to rotate, and it's, you know, just a mesh of a barrel. So when it starts... When I fall into this hole, whoopsies, it will transform, 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 and then reset. And then it loops at index 0, which that means it will loop all the way back to position 0, which is the first transform. Or it, it, position 0 is before that, which is before anything happens. So let's go ahead and start. So now I'm in play. So now I'm just going to exit the hole, but it started the event. And as you can see, it first transforms itself over to this position, then I do there, then I do there, then it goes down, uh, it goes at a diagonal, and then it goes down. And that's how many different transforms I had to do to get that to work. Um, a, a simpler one would be over here. I have this thing, which has three separate hills I'm using to act like sand dunes. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it. So I get shot out of here. You land inside of the event box, boom, it starts the events. And as you can see, there are now these little sand dunes everywhere. So there's, there's that one, there's this one, and there's that one. And you're probably wondering, okay, what are, what are you doing? Well, what I'm doing is I'm transforming them. So I'm moving them across the way. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking off their collision and resetting them and then putting their collision back on. And I'm doing that because when it moves from here to here, 
uh, I wanted it to have collision on, but when it resets it, it moves it instantaneously from that point all the way back, and if you have collision on, there's a ball there, you'll get flung across the map. Uh, that's just something I've learned. So, like, that's another type of uh, event that you can use. Another uh, simple one that you can use is, like, sound stuff. So, for instance, in this, whenever you touch uh, this box or around this light where it says blow a hole, I had to touch every goddamn single rock that is in front of me and all of the text and all of the fireworks, and I made them... Uh, visible set to false and collision set to false uh, with a very small delay. And I also made smoke and fire basically pop up and then go away after a little bit, which you do that by basically uh, having smoke or fire, which I have right here. It's just that they're set to um, invisible right now, but basically I have them become visible and then after five seconds of delay, they then are set to um, visibility, you know, false again, which means they go away. Same thing with this uh, fire. Um, I set it to true. I resize it so that the fire goes from a really big fire to a really small fire. I have a delay, and then I make it uh, disappear again. So things like that are really nice uses of the event system. Uh, and I'll go over one so people um, kind of have a little bit better of an idea. But other than that, you really just got to play around with the, all the different sorts of um, little things that you can do with the event system. For instance, uh, let's say you just want this to move here. This is just going to be a nice, easy... ...tutorial on this. So I am going to create the event system. I am going to do this so that I can click on it. I am then going to spawn a hole right here. Okay, and so when I fall onto this hole, or you know what, just to make it even better, I'll do this. Once you hit it over here, I then want that block to move over here. So I first need to do the event system and I need to select an object. That's the object I want it to affect. I then want to transform it. Then you click that to add it. Now I can transform it. Well now, if I like right click down here, I can move the camera around so I can look at this. I want it to move towards here. Um, to get a better idea of where I'm going to be moving it, oh crap, I am going to click on it first and I know it's in the green direction. So like it's that way. So now I'm going to go back in here, I'm going to transform, and I'm going to move it this way, which you can see that that is moving. And then you can type it in like normal um, if you don't want to do what I'm doing. So like I can do this, zero, and it moves it a little, or I can do eight, I can move it, you know, like that, but boom. That's for rotating it, that's for making, you know, it scale in different ways, and this is the duration. Um, there's only linear durations right now, but it still works. So let's say I want it to happen over a two-second period. So it just transforms like that. So I'm going to play. I'm going to hit into this area, and after two seconds, it gets there. Nice, you know? Well, let's see some more options that you can do. Uh, let me then add a delay and uh, after I add a delay of, let's say, two seconds, it's then going to transform, and I now want it in a different position. So the easiest way that I have found is, uh, I is to take the Y position that you already changed, copy it, go into here, paste it, so that it has the the um, the position it is after that first transform, and now I am going to move it a different way. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do like uh, that, and I'm going to make that over a duration of of two seconds. So boom! Now we have something else. So I am going to play. I'm going to tap the ball. I'm going to screw up. Oh god, I hit it too fast. 
but after a two second delay, it moves over there. All right. Now, let's also say you want to then, after a delay of, let's put it again at two seconds, uh, you then want it to reset, which that'll put it all the way at the beginning. And then after it gets to the beginning, I'm going to hit loop at index, and that should stay at zero, which means it goes all the way back to the beginning, and it'll loop it continuously. So I'm going to touch this. It's going to come over here. It's going to do a delay. It's going to move over there. It's going to delay two seconds, and then it's going to reset, and then it's going to start that. If you want a nice smoother transition from the beginning, you can add a delay in the beginning of the map so that it doesn't move for a little bit, but now it's on a continual... Um, you know, a continual event cycle. Um, there are a couple of extra options that you can do that'll help you out for everything. Number one, this little thing at the top right, the little menu, there's one time only, which means the event can only happen one time. Unique for each player means that the blocks will move uniquely for each player seeing it. It doesn't happen for everybody in the game. And then you could set it to active or not, which means, you know, you can make it so that it does, isn't working at the moment, or it cannot be activated by anyone. Um, the other thing that you should be aware of is there are really nice ways of just making things invisible. So, for instance, th every single object that you select, you can left click on and you can make them visible or have collision just by touching the event, which means that I could add this object to this event, and let's say I just don't want to see it on the map, you could just simply do visible and collision. And that's a really good way for on a map where you don't want something to start off visible. For instance, let's say this lane, I don't want visible or people to use it right away. I can do that. And then after, so if I do a delay and I move it up here, I can do a delay now of two seconds. And then after a delay of two seconds, I can make it visible. So now it's visible. And then I can make the collision true. So now, what should happen is that I start the map. It's now visible. I'm going to let it reset once so that people can see it without being confused. But now in the beginning, there should be a two-second delay. And then it becomes visible and it has collision. It has the, the another delay. It moves all the way over. And then it resets. And it becomes visible and uh, invisible and it doesn't have collision. So yeah, there's lots of other things you could do with the event system, but I just wanted to give everybody a little rundown on what you could do. A lot of people are really confused on all of the different controls. I know this is no way, shape, or form in depth, but if people need more, I can go in depth with different ways to use this, but I'm going to put this out for people who really just want to get their hands dirty with the event system. So I hope this helps you at all. Uh, hit me up on the stream life at, at twitch.tv backslash the stream life. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll Talk to you all later.